Hey everybody, what's going on? Hexlex here. I've got another Master Duel video for you. For our first deck profile following the selection pack, I wanted us to take a look at Unchained. Um, I'm actually thinking right now in my head this is going to be the Season 27 or 28 deck profile. Uh, I'll probably make this the Season 27 one because I do want to come back to this deck uh, in pretty short order and uh, just keep practicing it some more and also like really work on the build because... Uh, this is by far probably the deck I'm least familiar with of the ones I have built right now. Uh, I did intend to look up some Unchained combo lines and watch some gameplay uh, before this, this pack came out, but I think like pretty much everybody else, I was uh, taken by surprise by these sudden release dates. So, um, I decided to just kind of like... Uh, you know, find a few resources, just very briefly learn how the deck plays, and take it for a spin on ladder. I'm pretty impressed with the lines. Uh, some of the boards this deck can make actually provide a lot of good interaction. It might not look like it. It's kind of like, you know, when Snake Eye first came out. Um, a lot of people would see in boards of, like, Amble Whale IP Flamberge and be like, is that it? Uh, but of course, now we know that that inboard is incredibly strong. Unchained, I feel like, has a similar effect where when you see the end board, you might be a little bit like, eh, is that it? Um, but trust me, the end board has a lot of interaction, and uh, this deck has a lot of capabilities in that regard. So, um, for my initial build here, I've got just a fairly standard build. Uh, we are running a small DD package as well for some extension. Uh, of course, the thing to note if you have this card on the field is that you cannot special summon monsters except for DD monsters. But uh, the cool thing about Vice Requiem is that it is a DDD with three Ds in there, which means we can just overlay it for the Divisor King Deus Maki next, right? So uh, that restriction, you know, if we use the Dark Contract to search this out, you know, we can definitely just go ahead and um, go right to the Maki next, and the Maki next will have the ability to uh, pop a card on the field too, which is very important. So um, it seems like this is a pretty solid extender in that regard. There could be some plays that I missed with this card uh, that I might not be aware. Because again, I only really know the basic combo lines. Uh, I'm not super privy to like the deck's advanced plays, but I do want to learn this deck a little bit more. Uh, I think this deck's role in the current meta is very interesting with, of course, where Snake Eye is at, right? Uh, a lot of people said, I can definitely see it too, how if this had come out before Snake Eye like you did it uh, in TCG um, and, and OCG as well, then uh, it could have been a lot more powerful. I only hesitate to say OCG because this deck really did not have much of a showing in the OCG, um, but it did perform quite well in the TCG here. So. Uh, of the new Unchained cards, we are, of course, rocking a playset of the Unchained Soul of Sharvara. Uh, this card is pretty insane. Uh, the ability to quick effect pop a card on your field to special it, and then if it's sent to the graveyard, not even if it's destroyed, if it's just sent to the graveyard, being able to set an Unchained spell or trap card directly from our deck. Uh, one of the cool things that the first effect does is uh, with Tour Guide, for example, uh, if your Tour Guide is about to get negated by like an Ash or, or not an Ash, but uh, a Veiler or an Imperm, specifically one of those on-field effect negates, uh, and you have a Sharvara in hand, you could actually chain it and pop the Tour Guide and then special this, and then your Tour Guide will resolve if it's Veiler or Imperm, not if it's Ash Blossom. It, it, it'll still get negated if it's Ash Blossom, but uh, if it's Veiler or Imperm, the Tour Guide will still resolve. This is actually why if you have Veiler or Imperm and you're playing against this deck, uh, you should definitely wait for the Yama uh, and not necessarily uh, fire against the Tour Guide. Um, something I learned not only from experience, but also from just uh, some folks chatting on the Discord server, so... Um, yeah, no, the other new Unchained cards that we're playing here, we have one of the Unchained Soul of Shyama. Uh, this card's a lot better than it might seem on paper. It's actually a pretty good, not only is it part of your, like, turn and combo line, but it's a pretty good extender for comeback or follow-up plays as well, uh, for sure. Um, and then in the extra, we, of course, have two of the new Unchained Soul Lord of Yama. Uh, and I think that's all the new Unchained stuff. A lot of the Unchained stuff here is, like, from the first wave of support, you know, uh, the Ahura, Raika, uh, well, of course, we'll, we'll break down the, the list individually here in a moment as well, but, um, we do also have a bit of a DD package, not just in the main deck, uh, but in the extra deck as well. You don't actually need the main deck DD cards to play the extra deck ones, right? Particularly the Wave High King Caesar is actually going to be part of our main turn one end board, uh, because it doesn't even require DD cards, just two level six fiends of which Shyama and Sharvara both are. 
Uh, this card is very good. It has the ability to negate multiple effects that special summon, uh, and it also does destroy the card as well. Uh, furthermore, we also have the uh, Stone Darius as well. Uh, this is mostly an option to either go into Zeus or, as we touched on earlier, the uh, Divisor King Deus Machinex, which also, by the way, does have an interruption effect that's once per chain where when the mo opponent's monster activates an effect, uh, this can attach that monster as a material. Keep in mind, this does not negate the monster's effect. Your opponent's monster effect will still resolve, but it'll be attached to Machinex as a material, um, which in a there's a lot of situations where you can just... Uh, you know, remove it from the board anyway. Or if it's something like uh, Hita, the Fire Charm, or a Blaze, uh, there are some monsters that still need to be on the field for their effects to be able to resolve, such as leak monsters that have an effect that requires a monster to be pointing to them, right? Something like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, as, as far as the extra, the rest of the extract goes, uh, a lot of it is more of just like uh, themed link monsters that we can go into. Um, a lot of the weaknesses, I will say, of this deck is that. Pretty much everything you do kind of feed locks you, right? Um, like, almost literally everything. So, we don't have room in the extra deck for stuff like access code for easy OTKs, um, for, like, IP shenanigans, um, because, again, we are going to end up getting fiend locked. In fact, I think, aside from Zeus, I'm pretty sure literally every card in this extra deck is a fiend, yes. But uh, there are still, of course, a lot of good generic fiend links to go into. The Nightmare cards, particularly Unicorn and Griffin, we have here. Uh, Unchained A-Bomb is, of course, going to be an Unchained monster, but it's actually still very generic material requirements and is a pretty solid card. And then we also have Underworld Goddess as well, as she also being a fiend uh, is a good board breaker that we do have the option to go into. And I will say that is kind of the thing about Unchained that I found myself not really liking when I was playing this deck. And I wonder if maybe this is why I didn't catch on as much in the OCG. Your plays are definitely not really as explosive. Like, I don't know. And again, maybe I'm just not seeing the lines, but it seems like OTK in this deck is kind of difficult, actually. Um, but that doesn't mean this is a bad deck by any means. It just means it's less of a... I guess I'm just more of like a combo player, right? So maybe that's just what I value in a deck. But um, it means that you're going to have to play a little bit more carefully. But of course, there is nothing wrong with that. Uh, definitely nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I'm, I'm pretty solid on where this build is, just based on the research that I did. Main flex spots are definitely going to be the Imperms. Of course, I think Imperm is great in this format, um, but there are definitely a lot of other cards. You can play like Triple Tack, uh, you can try Veilers instead, you can play like more into Birus, you can play a Board Breaker like Droplet. Um, plenty of options. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything I have to say about the main deck so far. Um, yeah, no, like I said, I definitely want to play with this a little bit more uh, and explore how I feel about it and come back to it at some point uh, in the very near future for sure, uh, especially once I've se just seen more gameplay of the deck, really. So, um, yeah, anyway, let's break it down card by card, uh, and then we are going to move on to the games, right? So, uh, we are on 3 Maxi, 3 Tour Guide from the Underworld. I failed to mention this before I wanted to mention this. You do need a playset of this card. Um... I know it's a UR, but like, so I'm sure people will ask, like, do you really need Tour Guide? Yeah, you do. It's the only one card play uh, the deck really has. But anyway, uh, so we're on 3 Max C, 3 Tour Guide from the Underworld, 1 Fiendish Shrine of Warrior, it's going to be a Tour Guide target, uh, 3 Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring, 3 Unchained Twins Aruha, 1 Unchained, Unchained Twins Rakia, 1 Unchained Twins Sar Sarama, uh, we got three Unchained Soul of Sharvara, one Unchained Soul of Shyama, one Abominable Unchained Soul. We have Nibiru the Primal Being, one DDD Vice King Requiem, three Abominations Prison, three Dark Contract with the Gate, one Wailing of the Unchained Souls, two Called by the Grave, one Crosshead Designator, three Infinite Impermanence, three Escape of the Unchained, and the two Abominable Chamber of the Unchained. Uh, and that's going to do it for the main deck. For the extra we're on 1 DDD Stone King Darius, 2 DDD Wave King, Wave High King Caesar, 1 Divine Arsenal Ah Zeus Sky Thunder, 1 DDD Divisor King Deus Machina X, we got 2 Unchained Soul of Rage, 1 Muckraker from the Underworld, 2 Unchained Soul Lord of Yama, 1 Nightmare Unicorn, 1 Unchained Soul of Anguish, 
one Nightmare Griffin, one Unchained Abomination, and then finally one Underworld Goddess of the Closed World. Uh, that's going to do it for our list. Let's see these games now. Okay, our first opponent is going to be on Tier Limit. It's a pure build that I think might actually be card for card one of the lists from the uh, Duel's Cup Top 100. It looks very familiar. So I'm going to be going first, and if you're unfamiliar with Unchained at all, you have no idea how this deck plays, this first game is going to demonstrate a typical turn one combo line. Uh, we're going to start with the tour guide, but also if you open Unchained Twins Aruha, plus like literally any of the Unchained Spell or Trap cards, uh, you can do this same combo line by setting the Spell or Trap card and then popping it with the Aruha to summon Sharvara, and then link for the um, Yama, right? Uh, but we're going to make Yama with Tour Guide instead. So that's how you establish uh, a main combo line with the deck with either Tour Guide or, again, uh, Aruha plus one of the Spell or Trap cards. So we started with Tour Guide. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and lead with that by normal summoning her to the field. Opponent does have a Havnus, but I have an Ash Blossom in hand, so I'm just going to be like, nope, you put that card right back, uh, and let me keep playing, please. <laughs> so... Yep, Ash Blossom going to negate their Havnus. I don't think they have anything else far call correctly. So we're going to grab the Fiendish Rinder Warrior with the Tour Guide, link them both off for the Unchained Soul Lord of Yama. Like I said, if you opened with um, the Aruha plus any Spar Trap card, you would set the Spar Trap card, Special Aruha, um, Special Sharvara from deck, and then link into Yama, and you'd be pretty much at the same point here. With Tour Guide, we're going to use Fiendish Rhino Warrior to get the Sharvara in the graveyard instead. So we're going to chain link one Yama, chain link two Sharvara, or ch chain link two Rhino Warrior rather. Um, we're going to add the Aruha with the Yama, and then with the Sharvara, we're going to set Escape of the Unchained. Now we can pop or set Escape of the Unchained with the Aruha and summon. We're going to summon Sarama from the deck. Now with Sarama's first effect, we can target an Unchained card in our graveyard, set it, and then destroy a card we control. We're going to set the Escape of the Unchained. Uh, do grab this one, by the way, uh, if you don't already open it, because it's going to be more interruption on your opponent's turn. Uh, so we can set the Escape of the Unchained that we sent earlier with Sharvara, and then after we do that, we destroy the Aruha. This will activate Aruha's effect, summoning Shyama, the Blue Doggy, <laughs> as I come to remember it, uh, from the deck. Now we can link Shyama with our Yama in order to summon the other link to Unchained Soul of Rage. Now we can use Shyama's effect from the yard to destroy our Sarama on the field and special it back. Sarama's going to summon a second Sharvara from our deck uh, because we want two level 6s on the field. Now that we have two level 6s on the field, we can overlay them in order to summon DDD Wave High King Caesar. And that's it. That's our combo line. So again, that might not look like a lot to end on, but this is a lot more interaction than you might think, like even ignoring our other two back rows, right? Uh, because the Unchained Soul of Rage... Well, okay, here's the sequence in which you would want to activate these, right? Um, it's ideal, I think, first to get the pop with the Escape of the Unchained to destroy your Soul of Rage and then an opponent's card. Uh, this will activate not only the Soul of Rage effect, which will let you get a Fiend Monster from Grave back to hand for follow-up plays, but more importantly, uh, it'll activate the Unchained Soul Lord of Yama's effect, which will allow you to... Banish this from your graveyard and then bring back your Unchained Soul Lord of Rage. You'll get asked during your turn, during your combo line, if you want to activate this graveyard effect, don't do it because you want to do it on your opponent's turn. So after we pop that card, we can or pop a card with Escape of the Unchained. Uh, we can add back again a Fiend Monster with the Soul of Rage. That'll bring a bet, uh, and then the Yama will bring back the Soul of Rage, right? So then we can use Soul of Rage's effects to link with an opponent's face at monster on the field. And if you time it well, you could even link into a Nightmare Unicorn and have another card on your opponent's field to spin back. The Wave King Caesar also represents multiple special summon negates. So we end on one, two, three, four, and potentially five pieces of disruption uh, with the turn one combo line. So again, might not look like a lot, but it's just layered interaction, right? Uh, anyway, opponent's going to lead with the uh, Shiren here milling some not great cards but they did mill a keldo which is actually pretty good here one thing to note is that they we already know they have the happiness in hand so they're much less likely to hit a fuser here uh, they're gonna heartbeat away my escape of the unchained uh, i'm gonna let it resolve i definitely don't want to be like destroying a shiren right 
Uh, so when they go to use Havnus' effect, I can negate it with the Caesar. They're going to chain Super Poly, which definitely does not negate my Caesar, but uh, still a pretty good play. Fusing Shiren with my Unchained Soul of Rage for a Mud Dragon. Yep, makes sense. I'm kind of surprised they didn't fuse away my Caesar because, oh, but because it's water, right? That makes sense. So they are going to be able to use Triple Attack, however, to steal my Caesar, and they still have a normal summon Rhino Heart to follow up. So, pretty brutal. Uh, they definitely were able to play through that pretty well there. I will say, that is like the thing I've noticed a lot, is that uh, it's even though you end on the five piece of interruption, it's pretty rare that you actually get to be able to play you know them all out, but I guess to be fair, that's also Yu-Gi-Oh too. Um, this isn't lethal, by the way. This is not lethal. So, uh, opponent's going to go main phase two for the Zeus here. I'm going to nib now, because my opponent's already used all their fusers, right? So even though they can bring back Kaleido Heart and mill a tier limit monster by doing so, uh, you know, I still get to, um, you know, summon the Nibiru and clear a bit of their board. So when I go to activate the Sharvara, my opponent uses Keldo, which I was like, finally they use the Keldo. That means I can use my Abominable Chamber of the Unchained now. I have not activated this yet, because if I activated this, it could, of course, just chain the Keldo from the yard. I'm not sure why my opponent used Keldo here uh, on the Sharvara effects, because, you know, that doesn't, you know, prevent it from activating or anything, but I'll still be able to set an Unchained Spell or Trap card. But yeah, so... Like I said, once this chain resolves, now that Keldo has finally been activated, we're definitely going to flip this up and bring back our Soul of Rage, I think. Unchained Soul of Rage. Yeah, so they get Kaleido. And they also get Scream for Soliac here as well. So still during their main phase, we're going to use the Chamber. Bring back Soul of Rage. Now I can link with their Kaleido Heart. Uh, I don't have a card in hand, so I'm just going to make the Unchained Soul of Anguish here. And Unchained Soul of Anguish can also, by the way, link with an opponent's monster. It just does not do it as a quick effect like the uh, Unchained Soul of Rage does. So, yeah, if nothing else, I can make A-Bomb here. But we also got Abomination's Prison, so, like, we're totally set. Um, especially with a set Escape of the Unchained here. I can just pop that with the Aruhai Surge, get another summon. Yama effect activates. Like I said, I can just link off with the opponent's uh, nib token to make my own A bomb, the link for admin point here. And there we go. Um, so that I thought that was a pretty good game to start with because not only does it show off a very typical turn one combo line, but like we had a really, really nice comeback there. And you would think that, and I mean, it is to an extent as well, that Unchained does not have the best matchup against Tier Limit because, like, you know, your interaction is destroying cards and destroying their cards will just activate their effects but uh you know it definitely shows that the matchup is not only not unwinnable by any means but uh, that we can even come back from having essentially a blank board and only 300 life points and no cards in hand and still win against tier that uh got to play out their stuff there uh we of course still have some more games to check out let's see the next duel all right our next opponent's going to be on rescue ace or sorry not rescue ace uh the snake eye that one i don't know why i said rescue ace um but yeah i'm sure you're all quite eager to see how this deck fares against snake eye uh this is going to be another relatively typical turn one combo line but we did actually open a little bit of extension here i'm just going to lead with a tour guide again uh, i'm going to start up the same combo line i showed off in the last duel so again if you're wondering how to do a Turn one combo line with this deck uh, with Tour Guide. Here it is again. And again, you can do the same thing if you open the Aruha plus any Unchained Spell or Trap card to pop with it. I think in that case, if you do it that way, you would just go for the Rakia at this point in the combo line instead of the Aruha. Because that combo line also, if you do it without using Tour Guide, it does take two cards, but you also don't use your normal summon. So that is, that is also a... Uh, a benefit to that there. Uh, yep, here's the rage. Like I said, so far I'm just gonna do things pretty typically, and maybe there is a better way I could have extended here. Um, but yeah, you'll notice right at the end I actually summoned the Rakia uh, instead of uh, another Sharvara from my deck. That's because I can just summon the Sharvara from my hand, uh, and then now I'll have two level threes as well by popping the face down uh, continuous spell. So I can still make the wave High King Caesar. And now, on top of that, I'm also going to overlay Aruha and Rakia into 
Stone King Darius, which I can then overlay into a Divisor Machinex with three overlay units on it. So again, I don't know if that was the best way to use my extenders, because I'm still very new to this deck, but it seems not, not bad to me. Who's going to lead with Lightning Storm? Even though, yeah, they're on Stake Guy, but they're still playing a random one of Lightning Storm. I guess in case they go second. I still don't think that's very good, but... So, they, they chose to destroy all attack position monsters. In response, I'm going to destroy my own uh, Caesar to summon the Sharvara from my hand. I figured, you know, it's going to get destroyed anyway. I might as well throw another body on the board that could potentially set up more stuff for me. Uh, and actually, this Lightning Storm is going to proc a Chain Link 4 from all of my effects here. Um, Chain Link 1 Caesar, Chain Link 2 Yama, Chain Link 3 Sharvara, Chain Link 3 Rage. I probably should have made Caesar Chain Link 4, even though it's a search, it's the least important one. And here, okay, here, my opponent had an opportunity to really screw me up with this call by, but I wondered, because they, because when they activated this, like, in, in the actual game in real time, there was definitely, like, a, a, a good 20 seconds between activating this card and their target, right? They're definitely not familiar with my deck and trying to figure it out. And they actually end up picking Sharvara, when Unchained Soul of Rage would have definitely been the card to banish here. Not only would have it prevented me from adding a card for follow-up plays off its actual effect, but it would have prevented the Unchained Soul of Rage from getting summoned off of the Yama effect. So, And the Soul of Rage, of course, is uh, more disruption on their turn by being able to link off with one of their monsters. So yeah, I think my opponent saw, hey, that that's the new UR card. It's probably important. I'll negate that. But no, they definitely should have called by the Unchained Soul of Rage here. So they do have an Imperm for the Machinex. Uh, they're then going to finally normal summon the Snake Eye Ash here. Um, I have Soul of Rage as well as Escape of the Unchained here as Disruption. So they're going to get Snake Eye Ash, uh, Special of Poplar. Poplar grabs Original Sin, which is actually a little annoying, but uh, we can make do and handle that. I'm actually going to link with the Poplar here. I have to because I think because it was Special Summon or something like that. Uh, Unchained Soul of Rage. Special Summon, yeah, because they normal summon Snake Eye Ash. Ideally, I would have linked off with Snake Eye Ash and put the Poplar back in the deck. That way, Poplar couldn't go in the Spell Trap Zone for Original Sin. That's why I said this is a little annoying, but basically, once Oak brings back the Poplar here, I'm just going to use Escape on the Oak. And unless they have a Diabelle in hand, this should be the end of their turn. So yeah, they're going to link off the Poplar for Link Karibo. Oh yeah, and then... Oh god, that's right. So that's going to be the end of the duel. But it's a time limit win because my opponent sat there and ran out the timer after they couldn't combo anymore. What a baby! What a baby! What a baby! I normally don't insult opponents, but if you're going to waste both of our times, and really more your time than mine, because I already guaranteed won the duel, you're just sitting in here to, like, fester in your loss. Um, yeah, no, it's it's like, yeah, I, I have no problem shaming someone who uh, will, will intentionally waste time like that. And don't worry, they were definitely reported for slow play, so... Um, yep, we won due to time limit against this big old baby, uh, because we're able to control down their Snake Eye plays, uh, even though they had a lot of interruption for our interruption, like the Imperm for the Machinex, and, uh, um, the Call By, while, I mean, to be fair, that Call By could have messed us up a lot harder, but thankfully, our opponent did not know how to play against us, so good for that. Um, anyway, we have a couple more games to watch, let's see the next one. Okay, so this one's gonna be against Super Heavy Samurai, uh, another deck that's had, uh, you know, even before the Duelist Cup, they had a pretty nice resurgence in popularity recently, and it's showed up enough in the Duelist Cup that I think we're going to see it a lot more on a ladder here uh, in the future as well. So this hand actually does not have combo plays. Sarama by itself doesn't really do enough. Uh, so as far as I know, right, because this card can't... Like, this card doesn't have the ability to destroy cards on my field like Aruha and Rakia do. So I can't pop my set escapes and then get the summon from the deck, right? So... I can still normal summon Sarama, set the escapes, and call by, and then pass. Who's going to lead with normal summon Soul Piercer? I'm absolutely going to max the in response, and thankfully they did not have a negate for it. So they're going to link off into the Scarecrow, and I think this is probably just like the easiest call by of my life here. Uh, by using call by on the Soul Piercer, we not only get it out of the graveyard to stop it from being used for plays, you know, this turn, but now even if they search up another one, they can't use the search effect for the whole rest of the turn, so... 
That's going to make it a lot more difficult for this deck to combo. They do have a motorbike in hand, so you, they get to use that to add the Wakaoshi. Also equipping the Soul Piercer, and I decided to use my Escape here. My first one, anyway. Um, I'm going to use that to pop the Soul... Uh, the equipped... Uh, what's it called? The equipped Scarecrow, right? And you might be wondering, well, Hex, why wouldn't you just wait for the Wakaoshi? But the thing is, if I use the uh, effect here, I can use Sarama to... Uh, I can use Sarama to the effect summon from deck to pull out my Unchained Twins, Rakia, right? Rakia can, as a quick effect, pop a card on my field. So I can pop my set escape, the one I still have down. Even though I can only activate one per turn, I can still pop this and summon a monster from deck. A monster like Abominable Unchained Soul, which has an on summon destroy effect. So that's that was my goal here, right? So yeah, now that the Wakaoshi's out, I'm going to do the play I just mentioned, right? Rakia, pop escape, escape effect, summon an uh, Abominable Unchained Soul. Should have played in attack mode. I forgot this this card casually has 3k attack points. Uh, they have a Ghost Ogre, but Ghost Ogre does not negate, so that is completely fine with me. Going to pop the Wakaoshi, and that is going to be the end of their turn. Love to see it. Love to see it. Uh, draw another maxi, but whatever. I have a I have the Abominations Prison here, so that's going to be enough for me to have plays. Just going to grab a trap card, pop it with the Rakia. Uh, Rakia effect is going to, or the Unchained Trap card effect rather, is going to pull out Sharvara. Now I can link summon a Yama. Going to use Yama effect as well as Sharvara's effect. Opponent does have a Veiler for the Yama, but uh, I'm not really concerned about that honestly. And neither is my opponent, apparently, because they conceded right afterward. Holy cow. Um, I guess, to be fair, I would have been able to add, but I would have still been able to set... Oh, what would I have set there? Because I already activated Abomination's Prison. Um, what would have had to have been a... a, a it's a Spell War Trap card, right? Yeah, Spell War Trap card. So, I don't know. Having already used the Search card, I don't know if I could have set much that would have extended my plays, but... I mean, if nothing else, I could have set, like, another escape or whatever. But anyway, uh, we'll definitely take that W there for sure. Um, okay, we have one more game to see. Let's check that out. And our last duel here is going to be against another Snake Eye player. This one on the Cashier variant. It's funny, literally the night before Bonfire came out, I was testing the Cashier variant a lot. And I found myself really, really liking it. Uh, I just got to figure out if that build is still... Like, how much I still like it, you know, now that... Uh, bonfire is out so here i'm gonna lead with the dark contract with the gate and that does actually bait out my opponent's ash blossom so that's one thing i really like about the dv package as well uh is that i mean I, I imagine moving forward uh this won't be the case as people learn to play against this deck more but we did actually bait their ash blossom here unfortunately for me they also have the imperm for the tour guide but that's not gonna be the end of my plays here i can still activate a ruha to pop my uh dark contract now I can link off the tour guide with the Aruha to still go for my Unchained Soul Lord of Yama. Uh, I'm going to activate my Yama's effect to add the Sharvara. Then I'll have to set my other uh, continuous spell in order to summon out the Sharvara. Uh, that's the thing, right? Without Fiendish Rhino Warrior, I can't really set up as much because that would have sent the Sharvara to the graveyard earlier. Basically allowing me to have another body instead of having to search out Sharvara. But I can still end on Escape and Unchained Soul of Rage, if nothing else. And I have a tour guide for backup plays. So, opponent's going to lead with the Sinful Spoils of Subversion. And I'm going to chain Escape of the Unchained to target it in the normal spell. That looks really weird, but this targets. So if I destroy this now, this won't go to Spell Trap Zone. And I do have to target an Unchained Monster I control. So if this gets pushed back, my Escape isn't going to be live anymore anyway. Um, besides, I can just bring back my Unchained Soul of Rage uh, with my Yama's effect and still have it live as a disruption anyway. So, like I said, popping their subversion, Yama F to bring back the Unchained Soul of Rage. And then I can also use Rage's effect to just wheel the Shavara back in my hand too. So, not only do I still put Soul of Rage on the field, I have Tour Guide Shavara going into my opponent's turn. Um, but the cash variant here is so brutal because they're going to go for a Fenrir into Unicorn. And it sucks because I just kind of have to let them go into battle phase. Because here's the thing, right? If I go into... If I activated Rage's effect, I could have gone into, like, Anguish. But then, then they can just Special Unicorn and battle anyway. Nightmare Unicorn, they have no other cards on the field. So that just doesn't do anything. Um, it's just, I just did not have a good target to go into for a situation like this. Which was really unfortunate. 
So here they do end up using their battle phase, which means they'll live to the next turn, but as you can see, Bonfire is one of their last cards, which means, yeah, yeah, that's that's gonna be a full combo line. And although Tour Guide plus Sharvara is a pretty good hand for comeback plays, playing through a full Snake Eye board plus a Finbear uh, is definitely gonna be a pretty big ask. I'm actually gonna fast forward through their turn here because if I recall correctly, it's just pretty typical Snake Eye stuff from here, right? Yep, Oak for Ash, and then Oak send itself in the Poplar for the Flamberge, and then the IP. Yep, we have we all know this song and dance, right? I know the Princess, too. That's the other thing, is like, even when you think you factored in everything, or at least for me, when you're playing against Snake Eye, I'm always like, oh yeah, there's the Princess, too. Oh yeah, they go for a Heat Soul line here. Um... So I guess they were on that. Well, I mean, that makes sense being on this variant if you're on the Cashieras, because if you're on the Cashieras, you don't really play the, um, what's it called? Yeah, another tour guide. Literally the worst possible top deck I could have gotten. Uh, you don't play any of the, or many of the Synchros, rather, if you're on the, uh, the Cashiera package, typically. So, yeah, um, the Divine Temple is going to pull out the Flamberge as soon as they summon tour guide. I'll tour guide for Fiendish Random Warrior. Flamberge pulls out the IP. Uh, it's like, yeah, I, I really don't see a way to come back from this at this point. I think they're making the Appaloosa now, yep, as a three material Appaloosa. Flamberge F, and then, yeah, I just conceded here, because I was like, I st they still have the Princess, and the Fenrir, and whatever the face down card is, and any hand traps they might have in hand, so I was like, yeah, yeah, I think I'm just going to have to call it here, unfortunately, for that game. But, um, that was still very close, right, as far as, like, we played through multiple pieces of disruption, and we were still able to set up, like, interaction for their end board. And, yeah, I mean, honestly, if they weren't on the cash series, right, if they, like, I had Unchained Soul of Rage up. If they had, like, normal summon to Snake Eye Ash and gone add Poplar, special Poplar, Poplar add original Sin. Well, I would have played that, like, that first game, right, where I still would have been able to use, um... Oh, well, I not only would have been able to use Unchained Soul of Rage uh, to Link, but also still would have had the option to Nightmare Unicorn as well. Again, like that first game. And it probably would have panned out fairly well for me in the long run. But, um, yeah, maybe it was a very close one still. So. All right, that'll do it for this video. Thank you, folks, for watching. Uh, let's go ahead and move now to our outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video, that means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description, one of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non Yu-Gi-Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.